With April approaching and most teams only having about 16 to 17 games left in the season, we're going to start off with the playoff predictions a little early, man. And we're going to start in the Eastern Conference with the first matchup that's supposed to be against the Bucks and the Hawks, supposedly. Now, I was a bigger fan of Trey Young at the beginning of his career than where he is right now. Because at this point, Trey Young has become a professional bad shot taker, but he still has a lot of potential. But so far in the playoffs, all the Hawks have proved is that they can beat a Knicks team that barely made the 2021 playoffs before getting completely destroyed by the Bucks. Even while Trey Young was averaging 29, 10, and 3 in those playoffs, the Bucks still managed to get rid of them. Now, of course, if you look at the stats, you will see that the Hawks and the Bucks have split the season series. But don't let that split fool you. Giannis and the fully healthy Bucks will destroy the Atlanta Hawks. Okay, in those two games they split, one of the games where the Bucks won, Giannis didn't even have to score. All he did was out rebound the entire Atlanta Hawks team for the Bucks to win. And then only for the next year in the 2022 playoffs, where the Heat held Trey Young to his worst playoff performance of his career, and they ended up losing the first round in a gentleman's sweep. And I expect this to be a gentleman's sweep. I'll give Atlanta one game in this first round. Now, of course, the first matchup in the Western Conference is the most interesting matchup, the Clippers versus the Nuggets. Now, just by looking at this, you can see that the Nuggets are 4-0 against the Clippers in their season series. And this, of course, includes their most recent game on February 26th against the Clippers with Russell Westbrook, where they beat him again to uh, end the season series at 4-0. Okay, at the beginning of the season, we all know what the Clippers are doing with low management. And for the most part, the Clippers are a good team, but they just don't look like the most well-oiled team in the NBA. Now, it seems that towards the tail end of the season, Kawhi Leonard has turned up the intensity quite a bit, signaling that the Clippers are officially out of load management mode. And it seems that their rotation is finally getting together. And I've noticed that Paul George is once again the primary ball handler especially in late game situations other than Russell Westbrook, who handled the ball primarily in his first couple games with the Clippers. Now, I'm not going to go into who's the better ball handler between Paul George and Russell Westbrook, but I will say that having two guys on the floor at the same time splitting the ball handling duties can either be a gift or a curse, man. But my prediction in this series, even though the Clippers have turned it up, and I will never sleep on Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, and Russell Westbrook. I'm going to have to give the edge to Denver. In a seven-game series, I'm going to give the edge to Denver. Now, the next matchup in the Western Conference is the Dallas Mavericks versus the Memphis Grizzlies. And, of course, by the time the playoffs roll around, Ja Poosh, Shiesty Morant will be back on the field. But Memphis and Dallas have only played each other once so far this season. And in that game, the Dallas Mavericks completely destroyed the Memphis Grizzlies 137-96. and And, of course, the last time they played was obviously before the Kyrie Irving trade. So they got blown out like this. I know it's just one game, but with the addition of Kyrie Irving, I expect a series between them to look a lot like this game. Now, that's not to say that I don't have any faith at all in the Memphis Grizzlies. In my opinion, they're a gritty team with a lot of heart, but they talk a little bit too much for a team that has never won anything in the playoffs, man. We all know the skill-wise, with the addition of Kyrie Irving, the Mavericks definitely have the edge and skill over the Memphis Grizzlies. And we talk about confidence. We all know that Luka Doncic has the confidence to send any team to Cancun during playoff time. And with his help, in my opinion, the Grizzlies should be pre-planning for that Cancun trip now. And the next matchup in the Eastern Conference is the Boston Celtics versus the Miami Heat. Now, the Miami Heat are a team that has just been disappointing to me, to say the least. And their schedule has shown that it doesn't matter how perfect Bam plays or how good of a leader Jimmy Butler is or how many threes Duncan Robinson and Tyler Hero can hit combined, the Miami Heat are just not a threat. And maybe when they get swept in the first round by the Celtics, Eric Spolster will start to reevaluate some of those big contracts. <clears throat> Duncan Robinson. As for the Brooklyn 76er series, I mean... <laughs> The 76 has already won the season series 3-0 against the Nets when they still had Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. Now being led by Spencer Dinwiddie, the Nets are still a good team. Obviously nowhere near as good as they once could have been, but the 76ers should make quick work of these guys. I mean, I don't think it'll be a sweep or anything. Hell, I even predict that the Nets will get two wins, but ultimately I predict this series will end 2-4. And going back to the West, the Sacramento and Timberwolves series, I don't want to be too biased, but I don't really care about that series, man. I feel like the Sacramento Kings will win that series, but ultimately it doesn't matter which one of these two teams advances to the second round because they are not meant to make it far at all. These are two teams that are just simply not there um, and probably won't be there for the next few years. 
and of course nobody's talking about the Knicks casually making the playoffs again for the first time since 2021 which ended their first drought but this New York Cleveland series man I'm not gonna lie I'm excited to watch this with the Knicks being led by Jalen Brunson in his breakout season alongside Julius Randle and of course the Cavaliers have just turned around in a way that nobody expected whenever it was announced that Donovan Mitchell was headed to Cleveland now this series can go either way but my problem with the New York Knicks is not Jalen Brunson, who I have full faith in in this playoff series. It's his co-star Julius Randle, who, as pointed out by Stephen A. Smith one day, Julius Randle is one of the most predictable superstars in the NBA. And honestly, that is not going to help them against the Cavaliers. And ever predicting that the Knicks would make it past the first round of the playoffs is sort of taboo. Sorry, New York. Now it's time for my favorite matchup in the first round. We got the Phoenix Suns versus the Golden State Warriors. Now we know that Steph Curry is back. And on his first game back, even though they lost, he had 27 points. We know that the Warriors system is a well-oiled machine that works whether Steph is on or off the court. Because we're not going to sleep on the 5-0 run at home they went in while Steph was out. Now, the Phoenix Suns are a different team. After two straight years of being good in the season and then making it to the playoffs just to implode, that has made the Suns one of the least feared good teams in the West. Strange sentence to say, I know. But now, with Kevin Durant, the Suns can no longer be ignored. We can't just act like the Suns are going to get the Luka special again in the playoffs now that they have Kevin Durant. Because with Kevin Durant, I don't know if there's going to be a Luka special or a Steph special, but I can't see any team actually humiliating the Suns. Now, I could be proven wrong, but I know what Kevin Durant is capable of in the playoffs. And as much as people want to say that the Boston Celtics figured out how to shut Kevin Durant down, okay, maybe they did. But the Golden State Warriors are not the Celtics. And as of right now, I don't know of any team in the West that has learned the secret to shutting down Kevin Durant on offense, as we've only ever even seen it once. But I'm not going to cap. The Warriors are going to win that series man the Warriors are going to win because I don't expect Kevin Durant to shoot them out of the series and when the Suns do lose the series I don't expect it to be Kevin Durant's fault as with many Chris Paul led teams I believe it will be completely up to how Chris Paul plays against the Warriors that will decide who goes to the next round Chris Paul is the general out there and if your general is not prepared for war then it doesn't matter how much firepower you have while on Golden State that's nothing to worry about because the general over there is the one giving out the most firepower 